Hello everyone, welcome back to XYZ Architect. Today we have an exciting new topic to delve into, the envelope principle. So grab a pen and paper and follow me while we talk about this in the next minutes. The envelope principle is used on dimensional characteristics whenever they need to match and fit with one another and is established by the dimension of the extracted element. And it requires that the element does not exceed the maximum material condition. So, in other words, just imagine an envelope on the geometrical element that does not exceed its maximum material, right here, just like we can see in this example. The envelope principle is represented on the technical drawing using this symbol. And this is available only for the ISO standards, because in the ASME standards, the envelope principle is established by default. So this is default envelope in the ASME standards. Whenever you see a simple dimension just like this, you have to understand that you have to evaluate it as an envelope, okay? Every element has to be evaluated with the envelope principle from the start. But ASME also states that without a supplementary form control, the feature form is uncontrolled where the independency symbol is applied. What that means is the envelope principle is not applied for the characteristics whenever this symbol is represented on the technical drawing. Returning to the ISO standards where we find out that the envelope requirement can be a combination of two point size. So you can find for example in the technical drawing the LP combined with the GN right or the GX. The GN is the minimum circumscribed size for the shaft and the GX maximum inscribed element for the holes. This last two applies for the maximum material limit of size. Now let's see how to apply this requirement in Calypso. I've prepared the drawing and the measurement program for this example and here we have the drawing where we can find two examples that covers the envelope principle. One is for the hole from here, right here, where it states that it has to be a diameter of 40 plus minus 0.1 evaluated with local points. And we will see that this is kind of like a envelope principle that applies. And right here where we have the diameter for the four holes from the right view with a diameter of 20 plus minus 0.1 with the envelope principle applied. So in order to do this in Calypso, I put together this example. I've taken the planes from the top, the lateral size, and I created a simple alignment. And then we extracted the circle from the cylinder from the top. And let's extract also a cylinder from here to have the examples. And for the cylinder from the top, we had the requirement to have the local points. And to do this, go to size, standard, two point diameter, choose the circle and make sure that two point di distance diameter is uh, ticked right here. Set the tolerances plus minus 0 0.1 and notice that we have a minimum and a maximum right here, right? And we also have a beautiful uh, representation. So let's see it like this. And I think we don't need this also. Let's see it like this. 
Okay, uh, this is for two point distance. And now if we go to the cylinder right here, let's uh, make sure that the strategy is correct. Go to circle path, set here, for example, 250. Make it with a five millimeter speed and we have our 380 degrees. Set it at four millimeters and uh, now okay. And I think it's fine right now. Okay. Execute it. Make sure you have some results. Remember that you have to make the strategy by scanning if you want to use this evaluation, this type of evaluations. Okay, go and choose the cylinder. And for the cylinders, remember that we have the envelope condition, right? So this is the maximum inscribed diameter. And this is the minimum circumscribed like the minimum circumscribed but notice that on the evaluation parameters you have the outer tangential feature evaluation method so remember whenever you use envelope condition you will have this and you cannot really choose anything from here if you evaluate it as a two point diameter for the example that we had here uh, you will have the evaluation parameter set to LSQ and you can choose whenever, wherever you think it's fit, but leave it as LSQ. I think it's, it's better this way. Okay, so remember that you can use this type of uh, evaluation also for the distance between planes, between surfaces. Let's go and see the whole surface. But in order to do this, you have to have a symmetry plane, but not a symmetry from here. So not a construction symmetry. You have to have a special geometry symmetry plane right here. Okay, so let me exemplify a little. I will extract this plane and I will extract this one. Let's make sure the strategy is set to scanning. Okay. I don't think we need all of them, but I will leave it for now. And for this one as well. Strategy. Set it to two. Okay. And now create the symmetry plane. Okay, recall feature points and recall the, the feature points from the two planes. Now we have values, but we have to execute. Okay. And now we can use this one if we go to size, standard, and go to two point distance. Notice that at two point distance, you don't have any other option but to choose only one feature. And the only one is the symmetry plane. Now you can choose a two point distance or an envelope condition. For the envelope condition, again, you will get the outer, tang outer tangential feature. And for the two point distance, you will get the LSQ feature. And for the graphical representations, here you have it. For the envelope, it will show you the minimum like we can see right here. Okay, you can go to CAD evaluation and set this to cylinders. Let's set it like with a diameter of two. 
to be more prominent and um, let's set here for example 0 0.01 and 0 0.01 to have it like this oh see and for the two point distance is like this so we have the max value the mean value for the two point distance and the envelope condition only shows the minimum value Thank you for watching. I hope this information helps you. I hope this information will help to better understand the results and to better understand what to do to make parts better, to have better quality. Remember that you can always support this channel by Patreon. And until next time, do not forget, learn as much as you can.